privileged uh, to host uh, uh, Mr. Katebe uh, Terry, uh, who is uh, in uh, China, and we'll be looking at uh, the theme uh, Understanding the Times. And yeah. maybe people might be wondering uh, to know who is Mr. Katebe, what does he do? And I know that uh, we are blessed to have you as a, uh, as a teacher, a mathematician teacher, and I'm sure uh, you've uh, trotted uh, or worked across continents, uh, uh, continent of Africa and uh, Europe in the UK, and now you are in uh, uh, China. Please uh, tell us uh, a bit uh, of uh, your background. Uh, yes, please. Okay, thank you very much. Um... I'm now teaching um, A-level mathematics in China, but my career path is is a long one, and I think it will probably surprise a few people I have known for some time. Yeah. Yeah, and if I just uh, go through it briefly. Yes, please. Uh, so that we can, we, can, we, we can link up with long lost friends yeah, because now I can't tell my my old friends because we are all old and getting gray hair. <laughs> primary school. Um, yes. Uh, if I start from primary school, yeah. these are the schools I attended. Okay. If I say Prince Charles, anyone who recognizes what that primary school is called now, then they are in the correct age category. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Prince Charles mm -hmm. was in Kitwe, and it's now called Matete Primary School. Oh, my teacher used to be Prince Charles. I didn't know yeah. that. At least I've learned something this uh, <laughs> this afternoon. Yeah, that's why I did my grade one. Okay. Then I went to uh, Kamenza, Chidirabombwe, mm -hmm. before okay. going to Chingola Primary School. So primary schools, I moved a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, secondary school was Chingola Secondary School, all of it. Mm -hmm. And then I, I went to Southampton University, sponsored by ZCCM. Mm. to do mechanical engineering mm. yeah so mechanical engineering after in those days if you're sponsored by the mines you you were tied um, mm. to work for the mine for about four for years mine, which for I some time yes so i worked at inchanga mine and Konkola, uh, mm. and then i worked in lusaka at zeko briefly mm. Mm. as a uh, uh, manager for the um, mechanical workshops. Then I worked for Colgate Palmolive as plant engineer and Lever Brothers as chief engineer. Wow, you remind me of those uh, those days in Zambia, Lever Brothers, uh, a wonderful, wonderful big company by then, and we never uh, thought uh, that uh, it would disappear one day from Zambia. Yes, its disappearance was the re main reason that co co caused um, my family to have a change to have a change of plan wow. and decided to to move after the factory was closed and i, I was made redundant mm. so we, we we decided to to move to the uk where my wife got a job Amen. Yeah. Mm. and then from from that time um when we came to the uk i did the pgce yeah yeah mm. secondary mm. mathematics and That's so i became right. a teacher from the uk Mm. Yeah, yeah, and I taught That's at right. Weatherby High School for a long time. Then mm. did a few uh, teaching here and there on supply before I did another short stint at Selby High School. Yeah, uh, and then from Selby High School, I came to Nanjing Senior High School. So high school. You, you've so, taught so, so, uh, you've yeah. walked in different uh, different uh, places. Uh, How let me did you me. find yourself? Uh, uh, in UK and from UK, now you are in China. Uh, I'm trying to see as we understand, looking at the theme, understanding uh, uh, the times. There are people that think, oh, I'm here for good and I'm not going uh, anywhere. But uh, you are teaching, you have met different people. How did you find yourself in UK? And uh, the next thing you found yourself uh, in, um, in China. Yeah. Um, when Liver Brothers was uh, was closed and I was uh, retrenched. Yeah, I, I think that followed a sequence of companies. Reckitt and Coleman mm. was closed, and then Dunlop was closed, and mm. 
Johnson and Johnson, which was in the neighborhood, was also closed. And the idea, I think, was globalization. Yeah. Um, and and oh, the multinationals decided it was cheaper because they had huge factories. Um, if I can give you an example, the yeah. factory Lever, Lever Brothers I was running, uh, we were producing um, like 30 tons of, uh, on one product, 30 tons yeah. of soap per day, okay? Which sounds yeah. like a lot because 30 tons a day means your 30 ton truck. Wow. Or two 15 ton trucks every day are leaving. But mm. if you compare that to the South African factory at Boxberg, it was producing 30 tons per hour. Yeah. Okay? So all they all they thought was if we add a few extra lines here with the same overheads, we can produce Zambian stock. Yeah. Uh, but they had no consideration for um, the loss of jobs and the morale. And, and I think it affected the demand because yeah. obviously every, everyone they retrenched from the factory. Uh, most of my technicians ended up, I think, going to work for Trade Kings because we're making the same products. Products, yeah. Uh, all right. Yeah. Okay. So when, when that happened, um, I had a meeting with my family. Um, first of all, I called them together and I broke the news and everybody was quiet. Uh, and my idea was I need to give my children an opportunity to have the same level of education. Of education, that's true. That I've got. I said as the same as myself, or better okay mm. said i got i've got a, a, a degree so my children should have at least a degree and if they are able even a phd or masters it yeah. must be better yeah mm. so mm. after a short deliberation um we came up with because at that time there was a lot of agents uh trying to get recruit nurses yeah and they, they were recruiting nurses for to go and work in australia the usa and the uk Mm. I, I was retrenched um, at the end of December. And you know, when you pray about something and you're not sure whether it's going to happen. To happen or not. That's true. Yeah, but the way things moved so swiftly mm. that by beginning March, my wife was already working in the UK. Yeah. yeah. And that that was very swift. And the way it, it worked was she was offered the place um they sent a work permit two-year work permit when we were applying for a visa she already had the two-year work permit permit In, initially i thought that's the way it was supposed to be done but mm. it wasn't yeah yeah she was doing an adaptation already when she was doing adaptation she had already got a two-year work permit work permit yeah. which was i'm yeah. sure very good and i'm sure others who are in the diaspora can attest that uh, as a believer from what you have just explained uh, your wife uh, uh, coming and starting to work and getting a visa brother gumbo is uh, there pastor kunda on there and i'm sure we can all testify and give uh, thanks to god uh, it doesn't matter whether it was the wife who came first or the husband who came uh, uh, first but uh, we can thank god and uh, some of these visas we thought oh maybe after two years uh, i can uh, I can always, uh, I can always maybe go and uh, go back home and uh, do something. But as we are looking at understanding uh, uh, the times, uh, yeah, you are, you are right. Yeah, yeah. And um, I think the the big lesson from understanding the times was in in Liver Brothers, uh, the, all those positions I occupied, mm. a plant engineer, chief engineer, they were very glorified positions. In terms of prestige, mm. but pay pay was uh, like most companies quite low. Mm. But prestige, you've got a big car, big house, yeah. and true. then at the end of the month, they load you with a bumper harvest of um, mm. of products <laughs> of what you the stuff you make. They, they load uh, a couple of boxes, boxes. So, <laughs> so you never have to queue up for for the essentials, cooking oil, washing powder, yeah, but so mm. so. So, but when we came to the UK, it, it, it changed because my wife, um, in the first year, my wife would disappear for work and she would work long hours. Yeah. Yeah. And so there, there was a reversal. Uh, while I tried to, first of all, I tried to seek engineering. Yeah. And they, I was being called for interviews in the Midlands. 
Yeah. Yeah, in the Midlands, but our youngest was still at primary school, very, very, very small. And I thought, no, that will bring child care issues. Yeah, issues, uh, yeah. 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 So so, so that's when, um, you know, when you are, you are praying about something, and I was reading the, engin the engineering magazine from IMEC E, Institute of mm. Mechanical Engineers. And mm. I turned to a page after a lot of prayer, and the first advert I saw was, if you are reading this, you can teach mathematics, physics wow. and sciences there is a big shortage in this country and i'm thinking let me try and just give them a call okay so i i phoned them to give um just to find out what what would happen my goodness yeah first class the following day the epac arrived teacher training at leeds yeah and i wanted for an interview mm. wow <laughs> i went at, wow. The, at the end of the week and i was offered mm. Mm. The only problem was they were very excited that uh, they were trying to get me to teach physics. Uh, but I said, no, 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 no. I don't want to go back and start reading a lot. Mm. Maths, I think I can remember most of it up to A-levels. <laughs> All right. So, so when so, you so, came, so, uh, uh, I'm trying to, to figure out, uh, uh, Pastor Kunda will be coming in. And thank you for those uh, that have joined us uh, online as we listen to uh, Brother Katebe uh, in China, understanding the times. And you see, he comes in, uh, he was trained as an engineer, worked for all these uh, uh, companies, and then uh, you came to the UK, and uh, instead of uh, going uh, for engineering, as it were, now you're beginning to look at, uh, uh, to look at uh, mathematics. Uh, so how did you now finally get into maths? Yeah, it's, it's after I saw that magazine from IMEC E, which said you can teach. Uh, the interview at Leeds University is the one which convinced me. Yeah. Because that solved the problem of child care. Mm. So that during holidays, I will be home to look after, the, uh, to make sure the, there's an adult looking after the youngest child. And then when they're at school, we are all at school. When it's time to knock off. Um, you are all knocking off and going we are, we are all We are all back home because... Uh, the, the change for, for us, if you follow the theme, changing of the times, mm. um, it became my responsibility since I, I was the one not doing shifts mm. <laughs> wow. to, 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 to make sure I look after that one. And then around the home um, in Zambia, you'd have a maid, you have a garden boy and so on. But obviously here, here things change. So uh, at least doing the chores around the house was not a problem because wow. because my my mother i'm a firstborn mm. so my mother when i was very young i remember one speech she gave me yeah she, because i looked very upset she was sending me to do things in the kitchen yeah and then she sat me down and said before you were born i prayed to god for a girl wow now a boy came so i thanked god for the boy and i said this is a child he will help me in the kitchen if i need help so yeah. you are going to so she taught me to cook. To, to cook. cook. <laughs> <laughs> Little did you know that uh, one day you end up uh, uh, doing uh, those uh, chores uh, uh, at home and looking after the family. Uh, oh, yeah. So that when it comes to cooking, it's, it's not an issue. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, so, so, so that, that changed. And for the, for the year when I was doing um, the teacher training, Mm. It was quite a challenge, as you know, in the UK to live on one salary. Yeah. yeah. While I was paying, of, we were paying overseas fees yeah. for my training. Mm. But mm. the understanding was immediately I qualified, the income in the house will be times two. Mm. Mm. And that, that made a, a big difference. Mm. And by God's grace, we, we managed and we managed to, to pay off the, a, a bit of money from credit cards. All of the savings were wiped out. Mm. For, for my training, which which I've got my wife to thank for that. Amen. That's very good. That's very she, good. She, she did it. Um, you know, when she, she she did it without grumbling, and um, it really encouraged me because I was I was thinking, no, let's not touch the savings. No, 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 no. We, we we shouldn't be having a lot of um, debts yeah. when there is money. So we we did that, and yeah. Okay. So that's that's how I went into teaching. Into teaching, and yes. 
and the way I got the first job was, you know, in teacher training, you have placement. Yeah. After you do the theory, so you you are, you do placement. Now, my second school placement, yeah. uh, just as I was coming to the end of the stint, the head of maths came to me and said, um, we are advertising for a, a maths teacher. I thought before we put the advert out. We let you know. We, we let you know since you're already here. Mm. Yeah. And then uh, I thought about it for a couple of days. He came back and said, have you thought about it? Are you, are you putting an application? And I said, yes, yes, I'm putting an application. Ah, that's good. good, good. Wow. Next thing I heard were other members of the maths department coming to say, are you, have you applied? Make sure you apply. You need to apply. And mm. I'm thinking, oh, that's interesting. Mm. Um, and you know, when you go for an, when, the day of the interview, and then you have this gentleman saying he's worked for, for 10 years, he's an assistant head of maths. And then you're getting else. scared and thinking, uh, no, oh, yeah. this is not my time. I may not get uh, <laughs> this job, and uh, maybe this is not for me. Yeah, you know, when you're sitting having a discussion, and then he says, I've been teaching for, for 10 years. How long have you been teaching? <laughs> you know, you haven't even registered. You, you haven't, haven't started. Even started. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You, you just, you, you just go, <clears throat> I've, uh, um, I'm, I'm, I'm graduating in July. <laughs> yeah. I'm, on, I'm still on training. I said, hmm, I see. Uh, that's uh, so uh, China. Uh, Brother Katebe, we are looking at understanding the times, learning lessons especially from uh, uh, where you are you are in china and we know what we've gone through and you've uh, mentioned it. i didn't know that uh, uh is it samuel mateta in Kito, which used to be called uh uh, uh, uh prince prince charles yes um mateta primary school used mateta to be primary prince school charles. I didn't know yeah. that uh, it was uh, called uh, Prince uh, Charles until today. So we are learning a lot. Yeah, let's get back to uh, the topic, understanding the times. Uh, what can we learn? Uh, yes, please. Uh, uh, over to you, Brother Katewe, in China. OK. Um, I, I think an, another aspect before I came here, which, which uh, I could share, was um, when I was at Selby, yeah the the situation became awkward mm. um with with management those of you who, would, who are teachers in the uk would know once in a while when they want staff movements they 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 start behaving differently and so i was thinking it was time to leave mm. and and then i was trolling facebook when i saw an advert which said um I, if, if you've ever thought of working in china yeah uh, uh, come to Manchester at a Holiday Inn Hotel mm. um, and come and hear more. Mm. So, and I saw that on a Thursday and there was a phone number to ring, which I rang the phone number and I arranged to attend. And, and I thought um, it would be packed. Obviously, a lot of people want to go. Mm. But when I got to Manchester, uh, I was the first one. Mm. I sat there and the, these people... Um, they offered me breakfast and food. And then they made a presentation about working in China. And then we had a discussion. And the, the, one of the directors told me that ah, your qualification and you teach feather maths. Mm. Uh, China can swallow all the feather maths teachers in this country if they want to go. They, wow. they, 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 they need feather maths over there. So. Mm. It's just a question of you convincing your family and convincing yourself. I said no, I just came to find out if I, if if, if it's worth going. They said no, no, it's it's worth a try. Mm. So I then to cut a long story short, we discussed, and my family was in agreement. But this time, the agreement was if I come, I will just come and work. Uh, no, nobody's being uprooted <laughs> yeah yeah just yeah. on that one before you you go away from that point uh, uh maybe the audience and people that are listening and all of us is it important to discuss such issues with the family or as a man you just make a decision to say i've decided uh, I, I have to take up this job uh, uh what could be your comment is it necessary is it important uh, to discuss with our families when you are when we are about to make uh, such decisions to relocate and go and work somewhere else. Yes, brother Katel. Ah, yes. 
Um, it is absolutely important because um, you, as a family unit, you have to be in agreement. And because now our children, are, when, I, when we made the decision, they were all adults. Yeah. Uh, even if they're not living with you, you, you tell them, I'm trying to do this. Uh, and then I sit, sat back and went around the, the room, everybody making their comments. What about this? What about this? And then after a while, um, I told them, no, you don't have to tell me now. Uh, uh, it, it's this thing. I've, I've got a couple of weeks to make a decision. So there is this often. And so um, they all came to see me separately and told me, it's OK. You can go it's ahead. Okay. And, uh, yeah. it's, it's OK. You can go. Um, and then the girls were saying, does mommy have to come? And I said, uh, mommy does not have to come uh, because she has not got a job in China. Yeah. Yeah. If, if mommy wants to work in China, then we can try to look for it. If, to look if for a job for her to, as well. Yeah. Okay. Yes. But it's, it's not a condition. I just want to hear. And the, the whole family understood uh, it's, that it's a limited time mm. experience for me. Uh, but all of them eventually were very excited about the opportunity to come and visit me. <laughs> in China. Wow, that's very good. I'm sure uh, even as, as, as we are listening uh, as well, we haven't been to China, but I'm sure it wouldn't be a bad idea uh, to uh, to go and visit China. We have heard so much. Uh, we have read so much. Yeah, sure. So the decision was made with a consultation uh, uh, with the family. That's a great lesson that uh, we are learning on understanding the times that uh, we need to consult our families. We need to uh, talk to our uh, people that are close to our hearts, the family members, before making a decision. Yeah, that's great. So yeah, but on, on that account, um, there was a complication, which, you know, this opportunity comes and it looks very good. And then while I was processing the, um, the documents for coming over, yeah, um, yeah. I fell very ill. Mm. And I was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes. Mm. And I didn't know I had diabetes. So by the time I I felt unusual, we went to the hospital. Mm. Uh, I could tell by the way the, the young doctor who got the blood results. Um, when he came and he looked at the results, he looked at it again. And then he said, excuse me, he stopped smiling. You know when the doctors are- Oh yeah, when they're about to- They, 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 they have this smile and they're talking and trying to make you feel comfortable. The smile disappeared and he, off he went. Next thing he came with two other consultants. So they yeah. came and suddenly they were lifting my legs, putting them on, on the- on, on the um, Machines and on, all on, that. On, on the bed. And next thing is they're bringing drip. And I'm thinking, hey, what on earth is going on? And the mm -hmm. consultant said, Ah, Mr. Katebe, you are very sick. And I'm thinking, oh, yeah. And, uh, and I saw the activity. Yeah, yeah giving you need to change that most. Yeah. Then the, the consultant said, first drip, first one. So the, the first drip went and they said, give him another one, slow drip. And I'm thinking, is this how people die? And, and, and I'm thinking, mm. but I feel fit. I'm, I'm, okay, I'm not I'm feeling all right. I'm okay. Yeah. yeah. So um, it turned out that my blood sugar was over the top, okay? Wow. It's, it's supposed to be between four and seven. That's and right. it was like that. And it was like 32. Wow. And, when they, did right. the, and the, when they did the count, which checks whether you've, um, it's been raised like that for a long time, that mm -hmm. number, I think it's H, HB1C or something like that, it's supposed to be 54. Wow. Mine was 123. That was too so, high. So, so then they said, no, you see, um, if, if this is maintained like this, your vital organs can fail. And fail. This is and, fail. and then they said your vital organ means your heart, your liver, your kidneys will stop functioning. This is true. And they started drafting, um, right, filling in forms where you are admitting you. We are not going anywhere until this is reduced. Hmm. So we went in at nine o'clock in the morning for, for that appointment. And fortunately, I was with my wife. So she was there by my side until half past four yeah when when the blood sugar was brought down that's when they said since your wife is a nurse we'll we'll let you but you 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 
you must come back immediately if there's no improvement. Okay. And in the process, they, they showed me how to take insulin. Uh, they explained to me type 1 diabetes is autoimmune. Uh, it's not because you, 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 of your lifestyle. It's, it's because of a virus. So your white blood cells have destroyed the, um, the cells which, which make insulin. Yeah. So I was put on very high uh, dosages of, dosage of medication of, of insulin. And I was taking that three times a day and mm. two, two on each occasion, which means six injections per day. Yeah. That's right. One slow acting and one fast. Now, I was diagnosed that we're in the middle of processing for coming to processing China. Processing to be transitioned to go to China. Yeah. And, and then my wife says, ah, Numba Chala Rashani, mm. what are you going to do about the China trip? And I'm thinking, I said, everything has moved so swiftly, like, I need to go because we prayed and the prayer was answered. But then this comes in. Does that mean the prayer was not answered? Was not answered. Yeah, mm. but 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 then we we said no. What we'll do is we will delay because this happened in December, uh, January. Um, but then there was a a swift improvement in terms of how I was managing because um, you, you know when when you are off work, it's time to read about. I read about everything about diabetes huh mm. that's when i learned that the, the drink i like coke is poison it's poison doctor, yeah it's got too much sugar that's the doctor true. told me no if if you're hypoglycemic you only take 100 meals and i'm thinking but i only i take 300 meals that can and i take mm. a few of those mm. so no 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 that's so that from that day i coca-cola i treat it differently that's <laughs> so right it's no that's longer right. my friend yeah but um to cut a long story short, by February, when I was due to come here, I, um, I had improved sufficiently. That's great. That's good. I had improved sufficiently. And fast forward to November, I am completely off injections. OK, that was to good. The point um, where yeah, answered. I went to ask the, doc, the consultant that if my cells were destroyed what is making the pancreas then they said no it's misdiagnosis and i'm thinking in myself that i believe that god answers prayer of healing because That's true. My, That's church, true. my church were praying and if you check from my graphs the first few weeks the whole of january including i think february i was relying on injected insulin you can tell from the graph yeah mm. but then by the time when I came over here uh, in China, um, I was still taking insulin, but I could see that because I was able to to take measurements and then uh, see how much insulin I'm, I'm giving myself and measure what the the blood level uh, sh sugar in, in the blood is, and found out at some point that when I took insulin, I was making the balancing worse. Okay. Yeah. Um, I don't know how I concluded that, I, I, but it came to me very clear when I okay. when I I tried I reduced the dosage because I, I was in touch with my diabetes nurse at Harrogate Hospital by email. I would tell her that I'm adjusting because I'm saying. Then she said, "No, you can reduce if it's if it's happening like that." So eventually, when I stopped, but I didn't stop. I haven't up to now. I haven't stopped testing for for blood sugar. For blood sugar. Now, that's right. The, the testing for blood sugar is so simple. I don't see, I don't know why they don't teach most of us routinely once in a while to just take, t test your own blood sugar because mm -hmm. it, it affects so many other things when, when okay. it's completely high, when it's continuously high. Yeah. And then yeah, I've also one, learned, uh, as, uh, as you are mentioning, uh, 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 it comes to mind to say, uh, as uh, people, we always uh, need time and again to have our uh, just routine checks maybe 